In this video, I'm going to review the equations for beam bending for bending of beams in the plane uh, made of homogeneous materials. So, the setup we'll have here is a beam. Uh, X will be the coordinate along the axis of the beam. Y will take vertical and Z coming out of the page, and we'll measure deflections in the vertical direction, so positive Y direction as V of X, and we'll measure those as positive. Um, the sign convention that we're going to use is one that looks as follows. So if I look at a section of the beam like this, cut it out, then we'll take shear as positive upwards and moment about the z-axis also as positive. So and on the opposite face, on the negative face, the arrows will go in the opposite direction. And any distributed load acting on the beam we'll take as positive upwards also. So positive quantities go in the positive coordinate directions. Okay, so there are two equilibrium equations. So force equilibrium is dv dx plus q, so the distributed load equals zero. And moment equilibrium about the z equation is dm dx plus v equals zero. So those are the two equilibrium equations. Or you can combine them together into a single second order equilibrium equation in terms of the moments. Doesn't matter which one you use. Those are the main equilibrium equations. Um, the resultants themselves are defined in terms of the stresses. So the resultant equation for the moment um, is given as an integral over the cross-sectional area of minus y sigma, the bending stresses, dA. So that's the resultant definition. We don't need one for shears because this is a Bernoulli-Euler theory. Um, so that's the main resultant expression. The primary kinematic relationship for beam bending comes from the plane sections remain plane and normals remain normal assumption. That tells us the bending strain is equal to minus y times kappa, the beam curvature. And kappa, if we want, we can relate to the, der the derivative of the rotations. So d theta dx. And the rotations themselves can be related to the slope of the beam, dv dx. So in all of this, I'm assuming small deflections. So these are the main equations that govern the behavior of the beam. And if you want, you can also combine these two guys up here, the two kinematic relationships, and you can say kappa is equal to the second derivative of the deflection field. So, Just substituting one into the other. Okay, um, So these are the primary equations. Uh, we can combine these up together if we want uh, using the stress-strain relationship. So the stresses are equal to E times epsilon, so it's elastic beam. So that's the main relationship. And now if we want, we can combine these all up just like we do for torsion or for tension compression bars. So for instance, I can write if I want sigma is equal to minus E kappa Y. And if I s insert that into the definition of the resultant, I have integral of A Y squared E kappa dA. Kappa is only a function of X, and if we have a homogeneous system, then I can write that as, as EI kappa. So an I is the area moment of inertia. That's just the integral of y squared dA. So that's convenient. And now at that stage, I can substitute this relationship here. Moment is equal to EI kappa. I can substitute that into the equilibrium equation. And I can arrive at a single governing differential equation for the whole system, two derivatives of EI two derivatives of the deflection equals Q. So where I have substituted in for kappa in terms of second derivative of the deflection. So I have a fourth order ordinary differential equation. And to solve this I need for any given problem I need to know what Q is and then I'm going to need four boundary conditions. This will allow me to solve for the deflections of the beam. Once I know the deflections of the beam, I can use, I can work my way backwards through these relationships here. So for instance, I can get the rotation out of this expression here. 
and I can get the curvature in here by taking one more derivative of the rotation. Knowing the curvature, I can come to this relationship here and I can determine the moments in the system. And if I know the moments, I can use this relationship here and I can get the shears. So there are a lot of simple relationships I can get. Sometimes it's a little bit more convenient if I just want to get the moments themselves, observe that the moment is EI V double prime. So knowing V, I just take two derivatives, multiply by EI, and the shear forces also can be seen to be minus EI V triple prime. So the primes, uh, I guess I changed notation here, primes are shorthand notation for derivative with respect to x.